The world's now facing a series of really big global challenges. Climate change and environmental problems, pollution, biodiversity are really centre stage and must be in our minds. These go along with um, rising forms of inequality, intersecting exclusions around gender, ethnicity, race, religion, as well as economy. Um, migration and mobility is affecting more and more people as conflict and disasters and other forms of forced displacement affect people's lives. And there are other challenges too, those linked to the rise of infectious threats and pandemics, as we're seeing in the Democratic Republic of Congo at the moment with Ebola, or the disruptions being caused by new technologies and the threats linked perhaps to artificial intelligence and the roles of big data. There are intersections between all of these challenges and indeed some of the drivers and consequences work together to create a really difficult and challenging context for development. Indeed, processes that actually threaten to undo much of what we've seen in recent decades in terms of progress and to destroy lives and livelihoods throughout the world. But this is not just a doom and gloom story. It's absolutely important to understand the systems and the political economic structures driving many of these challenges. But there's also a politics of hope because what we're also seeing across the world is actions by citizens, by social movements, by enlightened businesses and by some governments and agencies to look for alternatives, often quite radical ones at the margins, and to try and bring these to light and support them. And it's that politics of hope that I think we absolutely need to grasp in terms of thinking about development in the future. Now, in doing so, I think there are critical roles for research of very particular kinds. We need to be able to bring truth to power, the truths both about the political and economic systems that are driving these challenges, but also around the often marginalised and ignored alternatives that, if we can bring them to light, might take us forward. And this requires research that is absolutely not in ivory towers, but is thoroughly engaged with people and actors in society. It needs to bring together different disciplines, both from the social sciences, so anthropology, economics, um, often from the arts as well, and to connect those up really well with the natural science, the climate science, the, the epidemiology, the medical science, which can help us address the more technical aspects of these challenges. We also need to make sure that the evidence we produce is mobilised to have effects with those who can make a difference, whether they're in advocacy organisations, in governments or in international agencies. And we need to do all of that in partnership, not just because that's the way that we begin to get the mix of global understandings and really local contexts, but also because these days development has to pursue a non-colonial model. These are challenges that affect everybody everywhere and we need the knowledge, the theories, the practices, the experiences, the ideas from people and organisations all over the world and bring these together in an equitable way in order to take us forward.